the Preston Center on the campus of WKU. This will be uh, the Hilltoppers' first game of the day against the Cardinals, who are also playing their first game of the day. Looks like we are about to get underway. We're also testing our microphone right now, so we hope that you all are hearing this out there in uh, listener land. WKU comes into this game uh, as the lower rated seed, so they will be the underdog here in this match. Sitting at 2 and 17 on the year. Um, I'm not quite sure about Sac Valley's record. All right, trying to get up, make sure our sound is all set up before we start here. If you all out there can hear this, will you please make a comment on this stream right now and let us know that you can hear our commentary. We are using a handheld mic and want to make sure. So if you are one of our six watchers right now, our six viewers, please make a comment and let us know that you can hear us out there. We'll see. If not, they still have video. Can you hear anything? Not through here, no. Okay. All right, well, we hope that you all can hear us out there. It said access the microphone, so we're hoping that that is the case right now. We're coming to you again from WKU versus Saginaw Valley. This game getting ready to start here, round two. This will be the first game for both teams. Captain Nick Johnson, number 19, rallying his troops. All right, thank you to uh, Big Bird, Alex Sorrell's mother, Debbie, for letting us know that the sound is working. Debbie, we appreciate that tremendously. Yeah, there's, there's Big Bird himself. There's Big Bird, number 64. So I'm gonna introduce my partners in the booth now that we know the audio is working. To my left, a uh, WKU Dodgeball alumni, Alex Heichelbeck. Alex, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Jazzy, thank you. To my right, another WKU Dodgeball alum and also an alum of the Louisville Dodgeball program, Ben Subcheck. Ben, how you doing this morning? Doing all right. Good deal. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. What promises to be, at the very least, a very spirited game here from round two of Nationals 2015. Now, I, I will say, Jazzy, one thing that I'm kind of wondering is not too terribly long ago, we played an alumni versus current team game against WKU. And uh, one of the comments that almost all of the alumni players made is we were amazed at how defensive uh, Western played. Uh, it was a very slow game, but it was kind of very methodical, which is something that a lot of the alumni weren't used to. So I'll be interested to see if they play that same way today. I think they'll play very defensive, trying to save their arms. Ben, you're shaking your head. I, they, they can't play defensive. I mean, that, that makes the game boring. We all, we've been talking about this for quite some time, Jazzy. you got to throw the ball if you want to win this game. You have to get people out in that manner. And I, I'm really curious to see if WK Dodge can actually do that this time. Well, I think we all come from the old school mindset of try to throw the ball, score as many points as possible, but the defensive mindset shift definitely happened after we all graduated to where WKU became more of a defensive catching team. So we'll see if that strategy holds true in this game. And we're getting ready to get underway. Bit of a, bit of an early start there from number 12 for WKU. And number 18. Looks like we have uh, possibly a false start violation. And it looks like we're just going to redo the opening rush. So, clock back to 25, so it's like it never even happened. WKU wearing their brand new all black with white numbers uniforms that they 
debuted against UK their last game. Saginaw Valley in the red with white side panels. Yeah, I don't know what you, it's not really trim, I guess. Uh, but yeah, if you got to call it something, call it white trim. So predictions here, Jazzy. Uh, I know you said that Saginaw is the kind of favored team in this matchup, but what's your prediction? What, what do you I think this will be a close match, and you'll see maybe like a 3-1, 4-1 game with Saginaw taking the victory. What about you, Alex? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, my only experience with this new team is that game that we played against them, and you cannot play a defensive game against Saginaw, uh, and almost a repeat of the start of the game there. Ben, what do you think? Give us a prediction for this game. Man, I just don't know. Um, I'm going to say 3-2 Saginaw. Uh, when we played them as the, the alumni, it didn't seem like they were a very complete team. And, I mean, we've played against Saginaw for years and years and years, and I just don't see them deteriorating as much as WKU has over the past couple of years. Well, uh, a very spirited game thus far, as we promised for our viewers. Uh, number 15 goes down there for Saginaw Valley, and Josh Wynn, number 44, going down there for WKU. I know that we've made the comment before, but again, we're in the same situation here. Western is throwing against a wall that will slow down balls, whereas uh, Saginaw will have the ability to return any hard throws that will hit off the wall in the back. So that's something Western's going to have to keep in mind while they've got numbers is trapping those balls against the back wall. Absolutely. Number 80 goes down there for Saginaw. Uh, looks like he might be the second player out for Sag Valley. Looks like WKU has three players out right now. Okay, it looks like updated numbers. I believe Saginaw also has three players out right now. That's it. Catch by number 15 for WKU. Yeah, it's a good one. I will say, though, it looks like WKU, I mean, they have made some throws. There have been some games this season where they have literally just thrown to reset the shot clock, but that's not what we're seeing so far this game. Currently have nine players, uh, maybe ten players in for Saginaw. I'm going to try to get a count in for WKU. I count 13 for Western. So Western actually with the man advantage right now. Uh, I believe there was just a catch made, though. I don't know if it was a team catch, though. It was a normal catch. Normal catch, okay. And that's number 20 going out for WKU. Oh, and that ball just gets away from number 18. That's Hunter Dickinson, number 32, going down for WKU. And number 27 going down for WKU as well. So a qu couple quick kills narrowing down the uh, WKU man advantage. Ben, what are you seeing out of the toppers so far this game? You know what? Saginaw has just made a massive, massive push and have gotten about three or four people out in the last minute. Um, and they are pumped. You can see a lot of people back in the back just screaming and getting really hyped up. So This is definitely one of up. those games where WKU is not a fan of the other team. No, they're not. There's some definite bad blood between these two teams. Great catch there. Josh Hicks has just, just had about five or six catches in the All-Star game. He is playing out of his mind so far today at Nationals. That's number eight, Josh Hicks, with the kill. Or with the catch, I'm sorry. And another catch but quickly gets out, but brings back in another teammate. It looks like that ball might have hit the ground on uh, the hit to Josh Hicks. He is still in right now. And Big Bird goes out there on a shot to the leg, number 64 going down for WKU.
Things kind of settling down now as Saginaw lines up a group throw and a catch there. Oh, and an attempt at a catch by Nick Johnson. I believe that hit the ground first, but the referee Jude calls him out. So Nick Johnson, the captain, going now for WKU. And 37 going down there on a catch by Sac Valley. So this game very quickly has swung back in Saginaw Valley's favor. And a group throw there by Saginaw Valley takes out nobody. And 35 goes out there on an attempted catch. Great catch there by 15 for WKU. Brings back in uh, number 20. Now, here's the problem I'm seeing. So far, WKU is doing a lot of solo throws, not even past half court and you are not going to get anywhere on the aggressive front. you got to be in that neutral zone. Yes. So currently, there's nothing that WKU is going to be able to do until they get some momentum, and it starts to push forward past the half-court line. Those are easy catches when you're throwing from behind your own half-court line or your own neutral zone line even. Alex, what are you seeing? What does WKU have to do here to survive against Saginaw Valley and take this first point? I mean, from what I've been able to see, it's exactly what we talked about at the beginning. When they were playing an aggressive game, they managed to pull the lead. Uh, and as soon as they've switched back to this kind of defensive one ball at a time thing, they, uh, they, can't, they, they, they just can't hang with Saginaw. Well, and I think there's a big difference, too, when we say playing defensively and playing passively. You yes. cannot play passive. You have to be the aggressor and the team that sets the pace, or you will get blown off the court. And when Western lapses into that passive mode, they are very easy to beat. So they have to keep pushing the advantage. They can be strategic about it. As you see, a great catch there by number 20. Brings back in number 32, Hunter Dickinson, the alternate captain for WKU. And it's a play like that that they need to, they need to like capitalize on right now. And a catch is huge. It's a one and one for one like momentum swing. You have to push forward right now after getting that, that catch. But they're, they're still not doing it. And unfortunately, some of WKU's best players buried on the bench right now, so they'll need to get some catches to get those guys back in. We'll see if they can do it. And that's number nine, Dominic Warfield going out there on the dropped blocking ball. That's a big loss for WKU, one of their more seasoned players. See, and there's exactly what I'm talking about. Saginaw putting in some of their big arms. They're able to recover those throws off the concrete wall behind Western. And number 15 goes out there, as well as number 32, Hunter Dickinson, goes out. So two players left in for WKU, number 20 and number 12. Number 12 is Brent Schinkel. And uh, we'll work on getting number 20's name for you. Oh, and Brent almost has the catch there. Number 20 with another great catch brings in 27. Uh, Eater Canejo. And number 20 is, let's see, Everett Taylor. Some amazing catches by Everett Taylor right now. That brings back in number 44, who is actually Josh Wynn. Oh, man. Yeah, so you get that huge momentum swing, bringing back in two players, and then you lose all of your balls. That is absolutely devastating to Western's momentum. 
Hartberg was on the sideline there yelling at him to make the throw. Uh, but they were so caught, they couldn't hear him over the cheering, unfortunately. Yeah, this court is very loud, especially compared to the court we were just on for Grand Valley versus UWP. Fiery, fiery matchup. A lot of, lot of energy right now on this court. Got five, five, 5v4 now, I believe? Three. WKU's got three in. Funny enough, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe this will work out in their favor. They're catching really well, so hey, just make them throw. Uh, one down, though. Josh, Josh uh, Wynn goes out there on an attempted catch, so it is down to Eder Conejo and Everett Taylor right now. And Everett goes out, backing up, throwing up his hands, trying to stop the ball. I believe that Eder may be a uh, new player for WKU. I've not seen him at a game before. We'll see how long he can survive against Saginaw Valley here. And there you go. That is the end of that point. Saginaw Valley goes up 1-0 with 15.06 left. We will be back with point number two here in just a